Now, I have a very simple, inexpensive tip for you that I think can not only help you with your hair, your nails, and having useful skin, but a lot more. In fact, you may find that this natural remedy solves many of the problems that you have right now. And this all wraps around this one topic of collagen. What is collagen? It's your connective tissue, tendons, ligaments, cartilage. One third of all of your collagen is made by one amino acid, glycine. And glycine is not an essential amino acid, which means that our bodies can make it. But here's the thing. Our bodies really don't make enough glycine. And if you're not getting it from the diet, chances are you're going to be deficient because normal proteins, red meat or chicken or fish or even eggs or even dairy are, are not very high in glycine. You'd have to be eating the skin on the chicken and the cartilage like on the chicken bones or organ meats. And a lot of people do not do that. So we can be consuming a lot of protein, but not getting this one amino acid that could lead to all sorts of issues. Check this out. Glycine is needed to make the most important antioxidant of all your cells. That's called glutathione. If you don't have glycine, you can't make glutathione, which means you can't detoxify, which means that you're going to have a buildup of toxicity, which relates to inflammation. This is one of the reasons why glycine is very anti-inflammatory. So glycine is very, very important for your liver. Glycine is also used to help with a leaky gut because it helps prevent inflammation in your gut, which I've talked about this extensively, uh, many different videos, as the gut inflammatory conditions are the start of autoimmune diseases. Glycine is also used in a lot of enzymes in different proteins, uh, one being called catalase, which helps you get rid of uh, hydrogen peroxide in the body, which also could explain why someone could have premature graying of the hair because the hydrogen peroxide is just bleaching out the pigment in the hair. Glycine is essential to make the heme in your blood. So if you don't have glycine, you can't make blood. And even your gums around the teeth need glycine. Glycine is so foundational, you need it for your DNA as well. If you're deficient in glycine, you might not be able to achieve the deep delta wave sleep that you need to feel regenerated. Also, I found that glycine is very important in helping people detoxify uric acid. And so it's even used as a treatment for gout because glycine competes with uric acid. And glycine is also good to make your insulin more sensitive. So it's really good for blood sugars and can help you with a lot of different things, weight loss, a fatty liver, visceral fat. In fact, the Greek word for glycine means sweet. It can actually even be turned into glucose as fuel. You see certain parts of the body, especially the brain, need a certain level of glucose. But if you're not consuming sugar, your body will make it. Well, guess what? Glycine can be a precursor for that sugar. And I think some people might be concerned too, if that's going to bump me out of ketosis, if I take glycine, it's going to increase my sugar. But at the same time, look at the benefits. It actually helps stabilize your blood sugar, as well as maybe a little bit more insulin spike, but it's going to make insulin more sensitive. So it's more corrective on insulin versus regular sugar that doesn't improve your blood sugars, right? But there's something else that's interesting when you consume glycine. It stimulates the opposing hormone to insulin, which is called glucagon. Glucagon does the opposite of insulin. And this is why when you're consuming amino acids, protein, you don't really have to be as concerned about the blood sugar spike, but it also at the same time uh, stimulates the opposing hormone to keep things in check. And if something could make insulin more sensitive, it's not going to worsen the insulin resistance situation. It's going to help it. And I also read a study, which I'm going to put all this stuff down below, on how uh, glycine could even interfere with the binding of oxalates to calcium crystallization to prevent kidney stones. So that's pretty cool. So here's how someone's deficient. First of all, um, the diet, if you're not consuming nose to tail, if you're not eating all the things with collagen, then chances are you could be deficient because our bodies don't make enough. There's a massive demand for glycine if you're under stress, if you're taking medications, if you're drinking alcohol, if you're exposed to toxins, if your liver is working overtime to get rid of poisons for some reason. It just so happens that one third of collagen is glycine. 
And a real simple way to get collagen is gelatin Knox blocks. You can buy it in these packets. You can get it on Amazon. You can look it up, put a little stevia in it and consume that on a regular basis to get your glycine. I think that's a really easy way to get your glycine. Now you can also get a supplement with glycine. And if you do, the amounts that an average person need would range anywhere between four grams to 10 grams a day. Here's some other ways you can get collagen. You can do bone broth. The problem with bone broth, you'd have to have a lot of it uh, to get enough glycine, but that's a possibility. Another way to do it is to have chicken soup and you put, take the whole chicken, put it in the crock pot and just cook it all day long. And so you have all this great collagen, which is very high in glycine. You can even do um, like pork rinds, right? Just make sure it doesn't have added MSG or other chemicals. You'd have to have a good amount of it, but it can contribute to your glycine. So in different countries, they do it differently. You know, they might in certain countries use, you know, just cook the entire fish with the head and everything to make their, um, their broth. Certain people have recipes for chicken feed or they, they cook their bone down in some broth. So there's many different ways to get collagen. You may have heard this term hydrolyzed collagen, right? What does hydrolyze mean? It basically means you're breaking down the protein into smaller chains, okay? They're called peptide chains. So it's just an easier way to get your collagen because it's already broken down. And also beyond Knox Blocks gelatin, there's another great product called Great Lakes Beef Gelatin. If you do take uh, glycine, okay, do you have to be concerned about taking too much of it? Yes, but you would have to have something like 600 grams, okay, 600 grams. We're only talking about between four and 10 grams a day. If possible, I would recommend taking the glycine with food, not on an empty stomach. But here's the thing, as we age, the need for glycine goes up. Um, this could potentially help people with osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, thinning of the hair, insomnia, gout, or even kidney stones. Now, I did another video on this topic related to hair loss. If you haven't seen that one, you should check it out. A lot of people watched it. They loved it. I put it up right here.